Posted Gloves here, and today we are going to be talking about, you guessed it, FM synthesis again. Now we are beginning to build up our vocabulary. So once you've sort of gone through these, these are like the introduction exercises, we need to start building up specific things that happen. That way when you make decisions, you can make educated decisions. Now there's a variety of things, and there's an interesting option. It sort of branches out into a bunch of different options we have here because the way you modulate volume with these things makes a huge difference in the type of modulation you use. So we're going to start off with some of the most basic stuff. The first most common matrix algorithm configuration is the feedback configuration. So if we feed a sine wave into itself, we get a saw wave. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. In FM8, you do the same thing. You get a saw wave. It's a little different because we get aliasing galore if we go above a certain threshold. And I believe it, it sounds like it's just softer too. Let me come over here to the matrix. So if you feed something back into itself though, you get some variation on a saw wave. Well, what else can we glean from this? Well, if we change the ratio, so right now this is at a ratio of this on this one, it's a ratio of one on this one. It's a ratio to two. If we change it to a ratio of one, we get a much louder saw wave. If we go down to 0 0.5 and that's because the whole, the whole side band thing I talked about a couple of videos ago. So now, okay, this is really useful. Wow. This is cool. If I get, if I get lower, it seems to get louder. The frequencies tend to go down. So this is a really interesting thing. So how can I, uh, I use this? Well, what, what happens if I move the, the modulation amount? You see that the, the fundamental starts to pop out a lot more. So one thing to take note of is our fundamental fades into the background the more we introduce these. And our fundamental is subject to change. Other things may be lower than the fundamental. And we start getting this question, you know, what, which one is the fundamental? Now, in my experience, it's always been the thing that all the ratios are based off of. However, if your ratio is not based off that, the modulating frequency isn't based off that, then your fundamental may end up being something below it. Those are kind of weird situations. You know you have a problem when your tuning does not line up. When your tuning doesn't line up, then your fundamental is the lowest. It's some other tone in your spectrum. It's usually the lowest one. So, okay. So as we turn up, we get our modulation index. We get more and more like a saw wave so that's really great when we do that now what happens when i change the ratio we notice that it changes quite a bit well why is that well if we come over here to the sign to our so we have our sine wave right here and we've talked about how it modulates it's how it does its thing and as a result the ratio so if you take it and we plug it into our equation that uh, I had a couple videos ago, um, this number is going to drastically change the spacing between harmonics hugely. If we get up higher, gets even bigger. And if I go even up higher, well, actually, the just enormous spaces between because the, the coefficient that's multiplying our modulator sideband is going to be enormous. And so as we get down lower, they get closely packed. And so like things like one will give you the spectrum. However, things like two, three, four will not give you a, a tone like that. So that's a, that's a pretty useful thing to note, uh, sort of the equation that's going on. And remember, that equation doesn't fully represent everything. It's just to get your head wrapped around um, particular things. And so if we set these ratios up in a particular manner with something else, we can generate an overtone, a harmonic series of some kind. With our basic knowledge of that equation and a little bit of experimenting, we can find these equations and patterns. So that's the first one is just that basic idea of FMing one thing by itself. <laughs> feedbacking it into itself and you will get a saw wave a saw wave of some kind now if i go into f and make it an octave lower and one of the my favorite things about this is you can type in a value oh my gosh i wish citrus could do that and then if we go up you see and we see that the they change quite a bit and these things uh based on what i showed you earlier you'll get these other sidebands that pop in here some of that is aliasing 
because the sidebands very quickly leave the audible spectrum because of that equation that I just showed you. And so the alias back in Citrus gives us the option to oversample those out. Um, but some older, I'm not sure if the DX7 did this, but it's sort of become part of the sound is that harmonic distortion, that aliasing. However, I want the option to, to just remove them. So, and make sure that when you're doing that, you turn your draft oversampling on, not your render oversampling. And because your your time, it'll sound quite a bit different. If you're running, when you're creating with Citrus, turn that on. And then when you're done and you, let's say your CPU is giving you an issue in your track, go ahead, turn it off. You know what it's going to sound like. You've, you're happy with that. However, when you're mixing and stuff, this may influence decisions. So you may consider recording whatever you did and putting that in. That way you're not like having to sacrifice quality while you're working. So that's the first thing. Okay. So if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.